Welcome everyone, this is Unstoppable Stoetsy with yet another Age Vampires 3 Wars of Liberty Great War Patch Preview. Today we will be doing the Central Americans as the dev team is working very hard to add additional voice sets to the uh, British Civ for us to play around with that in another upload. So, Central America, not a whole lot of changes I would say, I mean... Well, let's go over some of the changes. It looks like one of their cards was modified with the new effect since before it dealt with condemning, which priests really can't do anymore besides uh, Rasputin for the Russians. Also, what we have here, it says the Dragon Rojo is cheaper in Comida, and its uh, Royal Guard name has changed as well. They modified the line of sight of the Cockroaches, those ultimate units that are sort of like a spire sore unit that you get from the fort, their unique fort. And it says here Livingston Code has been reduced to show up in the Capital Age since people are doing really insane stuff in Age 2. Russia people with outlaws right off the bat with them, which the devs thought, hey, this is kind of scary. Maybe we better move this to Capital Age. And now it only reduces the outlaw population by one, making it a bit more manageable, you know. You're really not supposed to be winning games with just outlaws alone. That's kind of insane, unless that's a Civ specialty or something. So maybe we'll see a outlaw-themed Juanito Civ at some point that can you know, spam out outlaws like that, but for, not for right now. But anyways, let's try them out in a match, try the teeny-weeny little changes that they did to the Civ, see how it looks. Be facing off against Grand Colombia today in the Yucatan, land where these Juanitos Bonitos may reside. Alright, let's get started. I like the Yucatan map. It was a favorite since I was very young playing this game, so this is just as good for me as New England or Texas. Is our Gualacil? I think they did a change with the Gualacil as well, where I think he gets has less of a kill bounty or something. I don't know, they did something regarding one of his stats. We'll have to check that later. It's nothing too big, though. The biggest thing was probably the nerfing of the Livingston Code, since that was a big thing in the Liga. But people like Alucard and even Fufi utilizing their outlaws to an extreme effect. And now we're going to make some of our Hornel rules. They're very good at gathering from natural resources. They get a lot out of doing it, usually. A lot more uh, resources than most fills do. And then they get boosted even further by our Caletero. The Caletero really helps with that. So, I mean, let's, let's see what we can ship in if we get this house. Necesito una casa. I made a little bit of a modified deck. I didn't really think I had to call it new because it wasn't that radical of a change. So we could get the Horneros first, focus on the eco, then we can play with the fun stuff after that. You know, basics first. You need a foundation to every casa, or else the casa will collapse. Ooh, Jaguars. Let's get the Jaguars. They have a nice uh, treasure here of about 70 wood. We definitely use that in resistive. Certainly an asset for us. For some reason, I didn't pack any Caletelos in my deck, which is kind of strange, you know. Really should have put some of those in there in case this one ends up getting, you know, sliced up or whatever. Well, I guess with 16 Horneros, we should be fine to age up soon. 
Now here's the question. Do we go with Polish and get like their Grenadier units? Or do we go up with the Confederates and get their Ranger style units? Hmm. That is interesting uh, question. Now I'm on one hand I would normally go with uh, Confederates because here's the wacky thing they're both very outlaw friendly but I think the Polish if we did my do outlaws later are gonna help us out because they can have actually buff up the stats of our outlaws with one of their technologies and then you would pick up uh, pick up the Confederates in H3 to get their technology that lets you have two cardios and lets you put them in stealthy it's one of their stances yeah that's what I think we're gonna do I'll get Codizimo now just so we can have the Codio be free when we construct our uh, town hall should be available to build by the time we hit the second age I definitely like outlaw play because it's very unusual, you know. Not all the outlaws are very viable in every match. Like, you really need to find a good niche for them. Like, some of them are good at sieging, some of them are good at killing villagers, some of them have spy-like attributes, some of them are more or less traditional and good against heavy infantry or shock units. So you really need to find where certain outlaws fit in the category. And then there's some real wacky ones too that make stuff move slower and makes villagers gather slower when it's near it. Alright. I'll put down the uh, Polish settlement here. I have gained coin from a treasure. Oh, that's good. Good for you. Good for you. That's awesome. It's great that I need to know that. Alright, so... okay. Well, you always have to think of uh, immigrant units in a very different light now, since they don't have a build bounty attached to them anymore, so it's not like an easy... Oh yeah, I'm gonna spam immigrant units and just uh, do that. No, you actually have to think very carefully how you're gonna actually manage using outlaws, right? Because if you don't use them the right way, where you're going to use those uh, immigrant units and you're going to be spamming them then you're going to lose a lot of your shipment points and you're not going to get them back like you could before because before what you could do is you could get a really good build bounty on some civ like Haiti and get out like four or five batches of Galegos no problem but now that there's no build bounty on these yeah this is like basically sending them like an ordinary card of like six grenadiers so now you have to think about what am I going to do in the meantime when I don't have anything that I can make. This is cool though, but because uh... This might be because I updated my resolution on here, it shows that the... Shows the UI is a little bit smaller and easier to read, I think. Because before it like cover up half the page. Now it's a little bit tinier and we can... Glance over it a bit easier. Let's see what we're going to get, I mean... I think I'll go with Guatemala. Guatemala seems pretty solid. Napsu! Good script though, so yeah. This one's a bit more balanced, I think. Because if you go with the other option to, towards pursuing RG Escopateros and you don't get conscriptos, I think you only get like, what, Machetros and uh, the Escos for that. Maybe Vivanderos, I can't quite remember. I think for right now we'll just get a bunch of conscriptos, so we just have a generally good unit on the field. He's already building a fort? How did he do that? I just hope he's not going to put the fort right here, because I want to put a TP down this spot. Yeah. That would be quite helpful, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll get this. One more free vodka. 
get some hamburgesas out of that. We can actually, well, let's get the TP down first. XP is kind of important, I think, when you're the one Ito Sivs. You know, XP can really make or break you, I think, in a lot of games. Uh, let's see. I mean, Moon Children. That could be helpful. These are actually a really strong native unit. They do quite a bit of damage. If I'm corrected, they, they do anti-infantry multipliers instead of... Yeah, yeah, he put the fort right on top of it. Come on, man, really? He always puts it on top of the spot you don't want him to. These AIs. I'm not even going to go after him with my Polish units. I want to save those grenades in case I need them. Yeah, just get off my... Put that thing off of there. Yeah. Yeah, that was uncalled for. I didn't do anything to you. Yeah, let's check. So yeah, this is still like an anti-infantry unit. And it's also a skirmish unit. Look at that. It's not even assault. That's cool. So it won't die to Dragoon so easily. So what the best thing I could do probably is try to snare these in. So we can get some meat out of them. Also, let's get over here and grab this. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to do at this point if he's parked out front like that. It's going to make things a little dicey. Especially if he tries to attack very soon. All you can really do is just spam out conscriptos and hope he doesn't do anything more local to us. Uh, artisanals at this point. We really do need some anti-infantry here. We got plenty of anti-shock with the conscriptos. Now the question is how are we going to age up in a decent amount of time to, you know, compete with them. That's going to be seen. Could use our crates if we have to. But let's try to just do it with units for now. I'm going to see this wacky little trick. You just move the uh, whole arrows over to here and now two more of them fall into the Car Caratero Aura. Actually, I could probably move them down here and that would encapsulate them all a bit easier. I mean, we actually have a pretty decent military, I think, for right now. Not the best military, but enough to get us by, I think. We Oh, we have at least, we have two more silver mines here for backup, so. We could, we could camp out here all day and night, I think, and we'd be able to get some forces up in time. Now, if we want to do, like, the outlaw spamming nonsense, we're going to need to get, uh, this here, transnational organizations. It doesn't say here how much it upgrades their stats, though. Is it, like, 10%, 20%? Who knows? Just know we're definitely going to want to get that if we... Decided to go for the outlaw stuff with the, this one eat of Sif. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, that hurts. Yeah, the, yeah, the, these are the new Voltageros. They actually chase you down with their machetes after they fire one shot, which is kind of, kind of whack. <laughs> yeah, just keep that in mind if you're playing against Grand Columbia now. If you see the Voltageros literally chasing you with their machetes, it's not a glitch that's actually part of their new role now. They're supposed to be like the Highlanders, but an anti-heavy instead of anti-shock. So they, they like to chase stuff down with their machetes and go into full melee with them. I think I covered that in the in the Columbia upload for that Civ preview. And yeah, to make that work, they did um, adjust their armor a bit so they had a bit more hack armor instead of pierce armor since it was kind of balance between the armors before. 
I mean, at this point, let's get Spice Trade. Yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of hunting, so let's get that. That could be a very fruitful, uh, fruitful um, technology for us to have. As long as, yeah, we could actually use that for the berries as well. It affects the berry gather rate. And also, even when we run out of berries, you can build uh, banana trees and gather from something else that's affected by spice trade. So, this is really like the most uh, anti-environmental sieve there is. They just eat up the whole environment. All the mines, all the trees, all the fruits and the plants. They eat everything. There's nothing left when Central America comes in. Yeah, let's get an ag agricultural wagon and two crates of food. That way we can get the other component of the uh, outlaw spamming nonsense of the sieve. Because if you really want to spam outlaws, it's better to do with two Cardizimos instead of just one, right? And how do you do that? You use the technology from the Confederates in H3 to increase their build limit by one. And while we're doing that, we could actually train the free one right now from the town hall. Thanks to the Cardizimo technology. Here we go. Nice free Cardio. It's going to give us plenty of nice outlaws in the age to come. And the cool thing about that is, is we actually don't even need to build a stable to get a decent shock unit. Because one of the outlaws that the uh, Central Americans has access to is actually a decent uh, one population shock unit. That we can use against things like skirmishers. So in that sense we're pretty much covered. Oh, the Cachio... Oh, the... Cachulico has a... Carbonair icon. That's kind of interesting, yeah. It's cool that these outlaws have more unique icons now. Before they had a bunch of old icons for stuff. Yeah. Go away, you Juanito Loco. Juanito Loco, go away. No one eat those locals in the light here right now. This is literally a carboneer with this bayonet. What? Look at this. This is a carboneer. The old wine American carboneer common unit. Using his bayonet with a carbine to attack units. Is this intentional or not? If that's intentional, man. I don't know. That is, uh, something. <laughs> Let me put down a, I don't know, plantation, because plantations are more pricey. More bang for your buck. So we're gonna get, a uh, veteran conscriptos. Just because it's useful. Get a stable up too, since, uh, the signature of this country, Guatemala, is their Dragon Ojos. Let's get this Ford too. See, the good thing about having this Ford is it will actually um, let us train things really fast in an emergency. You know, it's a train from it much quicker than they normally do from, say, a barracks or a stable. So yeah, it's like adding an extra fencing school or something to the unit production rate at just at that one building. And I guess if you can control it really well and where you place it, you might not even need cards like fencing school or riding school at all. And you might just be able to rely on that, which is really nice because then you could get more useful cards instead. Yeah, let's put it down like right here. Yeah, I remember when it used to have a different color, too. When it was supposed to be like a Barbie dream house. Uh, let's actually get Industrial Age. I mean, we can already get there, so why not? What would I get? Well, here's the thing. If we're this late into the... Why don't we get Scandies? Scandies give your heroes 100% stats. 
100% stats to not only the Igualazil, but also the uh, Cadillo, too. That's, that's not bad, actually. It's not bad at all. Because, think of that, he's got like 600 HP. It's going to be really hard to take down by our enemy. Funny how he hasn't even built that yet, I was just noticing that. Lucky thing I didn't want to research that yet. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, let's get an amalgamation. No, this is Smelter House, yeah. And we can also pick up wooden structures. Dragon Rojo. Use our Dragon Rojos. Yeah, at least this bot has been pretty courteous to us and hasn't really gone outward to attack us at all. That's that's kind of nice. Let's actually get our Capital down now. Our Beneficio Capitalero. This will give us a lot of coffee plants that we can gather from very quickly. This used to actually be the uh, ultimate building for the Civ and then they swapped it out with this. This used to be a special like blockhouse building that you could build like five of for the Civ and you got all their all your military from it. And interesting, you, you still can pick your roster here too, so they didn't remove that aspect of it. That's kind of interesting. And it can also train Calrochas regardless of whether you have a country picked or not from one of these. Here comes the coffee plants. Can I have a nice caffeine high from that? Hello? Look at us. They really should. Ch that's kind of cringe. They really should give it a sweetest voice line since there's so many of them now. Other than that, though, pretty pretty cool looking wagon. Yeah, see that? The Cardio has a lot of HP now. Quite quite a strong Cardio. Well, so let's get um get Promise Housing combined with Livingston Cove. That'll reduce our outlaws population space by about two in total. Which for this unit actually does nothing because it's already a one pop outlaw. What would that affect? That would affect the Manoso, which would get about two population. So yeah, and then it would also affect the. Uh, Lapero, which would get about four population. I never quite understood what's the point, even the point of getting a Lapero, anyways. Like what's the, what's the logic of it? I guess it's good around like trading posts. It gets like an ore from them or something. Does that include like enemy trading posts or just your trading posts? Because if that's any enemy ones as well, that's actually pretty significant. But if it's only your train post, then it's really only good as a defensive measure. Alright, let's make these in the Jalapenecos. Jalapenecos, here we go. The cool thing about these guys is they're they're like the old school uh, dragoons from like DE. They can actually kill Hussars and Lanceros, stuff like that. They're not they're not really based in killing assault units. They're really good in killing the lighter forms of hand cavalry that have the scout tag. But they can indeed do decent against assault units in melee still, since they are a maneuver unit. It's one property they retain. And one thing we can do as well is, uh, since we are, um... We, once we get our RG, we can actually swap this out for another uh, another country and get the RG on the uh, conscriptos, which would be really nice. We don't have to just get the guard upgrade, which it suggests we do here. Get get the RG upgrade for them. That's the cool thing about Central America. Like if you're not under serious pressure, you're in pretty good shape to swap out your country all the time different things so you can get all six of the Royal Guards and get them together. They end up becoming like a secondary France of... 
I wonder, are we going to get another queue of these out in time? Probably. See, I didn't pack the special card that makes this go quicker, so this is going to take a while. So we'll probably be waiting for that for a little bit. Which is totally fine. Oh yeah, I forgot. He can actually build an entire gold mine now. <laughs> yeah. In the old days, he just he was just able to build like a rock mine, which was a lot smaller and had a lot less coin. Now we can build a fully fledged coin gold mine, which will grant you like 5k coin out of it by the time it's completely done. And they had to give this a build limit too, since uh, well, actually they all have a build limit because otherwise you'd be able to wall with these, and people wouldn't be able to get beyond your walls. Right, it'd be like a laming tactic. Let's pick up, um... Bimetallism. It's the only time I'd probably even get a card like this. Because I'm not big in... I'm not big... I don't use Silversmith a lot. I would only use this Silversmith style card for this suit because it has late game implications to it. Let's move him up too, so the miners can get more done. Yeah, looks like we're done with that. Well, let's see which country has the RG conscriptos. That would be Los Altos. Alright. Los Altos, here we come. And what you can do if you're really, really nitpicky is you can um, get the tech you want and then not actually return to the country you were before if you really want to, right? Because see, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get Ladinos, which is going to be a bigger statistical jump for these units here. And it's also going to make them a little bit cheaper as well. And then I can go back and... Uh, keep training the Dragon Rojos from Guatemala, or actually I don't even need to do that, I can pick another country that might potentially have Conscriptos and Dragon Rojos in it, if that's possible. It's not guaranteed that that's possible, but we'll have to look once we get back there. Yeah, I can also just start training them now. See, the cool thing about Juanito Royal Guard Texas, instead of 10% improvement to the stats, it has a 5% extra improvement to the stats and it makes them 5% cheaper as well. Adds a discount to the unit. That's the difference. Should be ready to go after him pretty soon, I think. Let's get another gold mine too and just stick stack it right next to it. Yeah, this is cool. You can like fully build a wall of gold mines that you can constantly build from. Or gather from. This is nice. Cause think of it this way, you get for like 5k coin out of each one. It's, that could mean a lot of benefits to you. And let's also pick up these coffee plants, since they seem to be getting numerous around the building. Could get fit in one more conscripto queue, I think. I think it'll let you continue to queue those in, though, so I think we're good. As long as they're queuing, queued up while it ages out of that country, that's fine. Four whalers. That's quite rare, actually, because the whalers are actually a naval ship. Can you actually make whalers as the, as uh, when you have the Scandinavian immigrants? Just curious. If they put whalers in there. Whalers are actually a special type of ship that's great at 
has a high gathering rate from whales and can also throw a harpoon to kill ships. It's one of those rarer types of units. All right, let's uh, let's think about attacking soon. Maybe then. Uh, let's see. We could actually get this Nicaragua and get an RG on our Escoltas next, the Legiment Legitimatistas. Let's do that. Oh, did he make that Granado Tucky? Oh, he's going full maneuver. No, I see Pardos in here too. I also see Conscriptos. I see a wide variety of things. Yeah. The Bob loves spamming these uh, Voltageros though. They're actually getting quite numerous. I have to be careful. Uh, let's get some uh, banana plants now. And then we can get... Uh, what's better? Furrier? I think... Cochineal farming is actually better for the Comita than the uh, Furrier is. So let's get that. Oh my... Look at this! Look at this! He did so many Voltageros that he completely sliced through my entire army with them. That is kind of scary, actually. It really is alarming. So now you can't make whalers from the dock. We should see our food go up, though, as well. Also, we could get some of you guys onto the Vacas. We really do need artillery as well. So at this point, I don't care. Let's just get veteran on the Lanceros and get these working. Just really need to do something to push them back. Estupidientes. I mean, at this point, let's let's maybe consider getting a bunch of these, like 14 grenadiers. I think that would maybe rock the boat for them. Yeah, I think so. And then we're gonna need to get some mortars like ASAP because this bot's gonna win with the victory real soon. Oh, and now he's spamming these too. So. What can you do at this point? Yeah, let's get him out of here. Absolute. Yeah, mortar should let's get a bunch of pedrails with the Lombardas upgrade, yeah. That's good I think it's gonna be the only thing that saves us. All we have to do is kill this. Oh! Yep, 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 yep. Do we have enough time, though? Do we have enough time? No, we don't have enough time, and he's gonna chump block it. Great. He's gonna protect it. How is he? Yeah, now he's coming in, coming in strong. Yeah. So, unfortunately, we need uh, Lanceros for this, right? We'll get the guard upgrade for now, I think. Yeah, get get out of my way. I'm trying to get over there. I'm trying to get over there. No, 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 no. Yep, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Shoot it, shoot it. This is so clutch right now. <laughs> oh, I got it, I got it in time, alright. There you go, okay. Yeah, denied. Thank you, thank Lucky, lucky we did that, lucky we did that. But we were toast there. <laughs> I decided to send Contra... Congelacion de Belen. To see how the Jesuit priest looks, if he has any sort of special ability or anything. 
that we might want to take interest in. Otherwise, probably just a normal Jesuit priest. Ah, oh, so now he's just like a hero. Okay. He does get buffed by the Scandies, it looks like, in terms of his HP. Oh, nice. They managed to shell his fort down. That's good. Now, this is cool. This means that the bard actually knows how to use his military units to build tents around the fort. That is actually really cool AI coding wise. Dude, stop attacking me. I'm trying to I'm trying to do something. Alright, now let's get a uh, counter marking. The other mining upgrade. Yeah, let's just trade off a bunch of this so we can get the Legitimista RG upgrade for the Escoltas. What is he doing over here? Did he? Yeah, I don't know. Let's get the ranches up here, actually. Yeah. Ranchers might help out with this. This whistle spot would just stop crowding this area. But I think we have to shell out his tent tents to make him go away, I think. Now that's a decent assault unit. Yeah, now we're cleaning them out, aren't we? So you really do need the guard upgrade to deal with units. Kinda of scary how this bot's like coming in so hard right now. Let's get the Confederate workers too. These might actually be kinda of helpful since they slow down enemy units. And how about these? Gathers more from treasures. Deals bonus to treasure guardians. That might be helpful. Yeah, the bot just congregates in front of my base like it's his own, which is kind of, kind of crazy. I'll put a mill in front of you so they slow him down. Listos. fuego. Yeah, just go on to this one. Oh, I didn't finish it yet. Oh, that's on me, man. I didn't finish it yet. Alright, I'll finish up the banana plant, then you can start eating it. Start eating all that potassium. Alright, so he didn't go into assault yet, alright. Yeah, once you get a decent mass of them, then you start to clean them out a bit. The problem is this bot just has way too many units crowded up over here. Oh, 
Yeah, I think we're about dead right now, though, so... I don't know, just maybe some more of these. Dynamite guns, yeah, that's probably our only hope at this point. Ooh, cool, so you can actually save the Jesuit now. He's now... Because before, the Jesuit used to just die and you couldn't recover him. Now you can actually save him. That's great, because, uh... Now, that means that the Jesuit priests you get with Mexico that can train the, uh... Dolientes actually survive, so you can keep making Dolientes throughout the match as long as you have them active. Which is kind of good to know. Alright, so we recovered everybody, okay. Well, if it's near a trading post, you want to try these out to see how they work. Maybe make some manosos, see how we'll see if they're still good or not. Still need to get this. I can do it. Alright now. Oh no. They screwed up the model. That's not good. Don't make that. No, you have to make the Munoses. Don't make that. Oh, they messed up the model of it. Oh, that's not good. They can't select them. Oh, that's not nice. Man, they pissed up the model when they were probably trying to improve it. I can do it. Where am I side? Right now. Where is our Carretero boy? Where is he? Here he is, alright. Just start making some stuff here so we can keep gathering. Yes, sir. I got him. Nah, you shouldn't be there still, though. Never mind, looks like we seem to be alright now. I think. Oh cool, I just noticed the projectile dynamite gun is an actual, uh, actual dynamite piece. Oh, so he's training Montuanos now? The Lumpinianos? This isn't good. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do with this? Now I just want to check, did he ship those or did he uh... Oh! So he actually trained both the Granadero Tarkis and the uh... Unless he got those from the Imperial Age. Yeah, let's resign. This is just getting a little bit overcrowded for my style. He says it gets you know, it's way too quickly. Especially these nasty voltageros. Now, interesting, did he go for any immigrants or did he go straight up with non immigrant politicians? Oh, so he actually didn't go for any immigration at all. 
He goes straight for the purest Juanito Bonito Colombian politiciones. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. But anyways, there's all the changes for Central America. Let's look at the post games. Uh, looks like, yeah, he really made so many units for me. Even though we killed a lot of them, just didn't cut it in the end. He still had another 92 to, or so to spare. Yeah, so hopefully we'll get to do England maybe tomorrow or the next day. Show some of those voice sets off and some of their changes regarding the marriages. Hope to see you then. Signing off now.